Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans le podcast Référencement avec Monsieur Dixon Jones, Big Boss de Majestic. Alors, euh, est... <rire> Dixon, est-ce que tu parles français <rire> donc, nous allons, on, va, on, va, on va parler donc en anglais et vous allez avoir les sous-titres. Dixon, hi Oh, yes, now I think going English is probably best for all concerned. So, really. yeah, you, you, maybe we go. My, my English is going to be a little bit better than your French. That's what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm saying that. Yeah. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is about the, the British learning system, but we're just not good at learning other languages. So, you well, know. you guys are the king of the world. Like, you know, why it's, it's, it's not because if you need it, Okay. Once, if, once we were king of the world, you know, <laughs> you know, then it was America. But when Trump gets in, who knows, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, definitely that's well, going to be the a problem. The world may change. <laughs> yeah, but England was the king of the world. And yeah. therefore, you don't need anybody else. You're on, an, you're on an island. You don't need anybody else. You know, <laughs> anybody who lives on an island, uh, they don't need the rest of the world. But, um, it, yeah, I think there are some advantages of being on an island, for sure, yeah. <laughs> But you are uh, working, you are one of the founders of Majestic SEO, and that's not on an island, that's on the internet, <laughs> which is worldwide. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, somewhat ethereal, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, Even yeah, if it's the good. French government thinks sometimes the, the internet stops at the, <laughs> at the frontiers, at the, at the boundaries of the country, and they're, they're making laws, so they, uh, in, in that order. But anyways, okay, Majestic, Majestic, one of the all-time favorite tools for SEOs, checking links. Sure. Especially you got a big, uh, big bump uh, since, since uh, Google started to tackle links. Uh, Mr. Penguin. We, uh, yeah, we've had a few bumps along the way. So there's some good bumps along the way. So yeah, I can tell you about some of those if you like. A bit. But, but you have, um, I think, The one of the reason, and maybe the single reason Majestic is so su successful is because Dixon Jones, maybe as you get older, a little less, but you used to every day be somewhere in the world talking to SEOs. Well, firstly, you're telling me I'm getting old. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, for reminding me. Uh, and actually, uh, I went out. Uh, yesterday, so we're in March, and uh, yesterday I came back from from Munich, and that was the first time I left the country all year, which for me is just bizarre. You know, my you used to be five days a week. Uh, well, I still totally. I still am uh, four days a week out of the house because uh, I live in I live in rural 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 England, really. Uh, so I uh, I drive up to Birmingham, which is Majestic's main HQ. Uh, from Monday to Thursday, and then you know Fridays here at home. So uh, that's it's all good. like Bir Birmingham, Manchester. It's like the Silicon Valley of uh, of England. Yeah, right? we, we we call it Silicon Canal in Birmingham because uh, we've got we've got more canals in Birmingham than Venice. Just not so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, I, I did travel a lot, and I still will travel a lot as well. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to do a map cuts and disappear off the face of the earth. I hope uh, I'm going to uh, be back out there. I just uh, need a little bit of time to consolidate some things in the office for a start, and uh, uh, and just uh, just uh, get get back on track with some uh, really great ideas and projects that we've got going on. Uh, and also, you know, there's other people in the organisation that uh, are pretty good. So Mel Carson is over in Seattle, uh, and he's a pretty cool ambassador for us as well. Uh, we've got Francois in France, uh, Francois. Gou who's brilliant and Miguel in Spain uh, so we got uh, and Louis sometimes so we got some you know a bunch of people out there that are pretty good at uh, talking about Majestic uh, so they don't always need me but I kind of like going out and talking I, I, too long too long stuck at home and I kind of feel you know insignificant to society and I, <laughs> I want to be significant to society so uh, I've got to get out more again <laughs> but but I have you today on the show because you're gonna announce something really big really big yeah we but, are we are so you hold on, hold on. let's <laughs> let's <laughs> keep them all <laughs> don't don't tell them yet okay <laughs> don't tell Go. them yet let's okay. wait for a few minutes uh, <laughs> let's give some background to um To, to our listeners, because Majestic is, um, oh, when did you start off? 
Well, we've been going for uh, something like 11 years, really. But uh, to be fair, when it when it all started, uh, my 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 uh, the, the founding director really is Alex, and he started by programming in his front room, and he he wrote a half a million lines of code before I met him. Yeah, well, he didn't have a product, but you know, or he, actually, that's not true. He just got a product out, a very sort of raw. He, he was, he's from eBay, right? No, no, no. He's not from eBay. No, 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 no. He did get some. Uh, he, he did get. Uh, we have got a uh, some involvement from from uh, someone that oh, was involved. Oh yeah, that, that was the finance but, part. But, okay, but okay. no, we've uh, we, no. He basically he was uh, at a. A, a site called Jungle, which is an early, an early eBay, if you like. So, uh, um, an early Amazon uh, that didn't succeed the dot com mm -hmm. boom and bust, uh, and then he went on to do other big data stuff. Uh, but then, uh, then he decided, you know, this thing called Google was coming along <laughs> and doing pretty well, and he he had this really great idea. He thought, you know, with Uh, things like the the human genome project and the SETI in space program, you know, they're using computers around the world to do all the all the data crunching instead of a big data center in Mountain View like Google does. And he thought, well, you know, it would it be possible to to use people's computers to build a search engine? And uh, that was his original idea. And so he he found a, a bunch of guys out there that were willing to try, and you know they all downloaded the software and started crawling from their computers and stuff. And uh, we found he found two things. Firstly, for crawling, it's great you can crawl the whole web uh, quite effectively that way. It's a good good way to to crawl the web. But what was bad was that in order to analyze the algorithm part of the search engine, uh, you had to transport all that data back to a central location. Yeah. Which would break the internet. <laughs> you yeah. can't transport the internet every day <laughs> on the bikes of the internet. So that's how we kind of got around to the link element because that kind of was the most difficult part to collect, um, simple part to then you know put into a package and you know send down pipes and things and centralize. Uh, and so we then you know now Majestic is one of the biggest web crawlers on the planet. Uh, we do have a search engine in Alpha, um, and uh, but but the the link information mm -hmm. has been going live for six years now i think um and uh and, and it's been growing every single year you know really quite dramatically and when it's uh maybe seven years uh and when uh when yahoo site explorer died that was one bump that we mm -hmm. talked about bumps along the way i remember yahoo site explorer going offline and uh myself and ram fishkin uh are from moz uh who does open site explorer as well you know we had to talk to each other that day <laughs> a big leap you know so we had a good chat there uh and uh and then you know when we came out with trust flow that was a, a massive improvement in our quality metrics um uh, and so there's a big bump there Uh, and then you know, uh, oh, basically today, trust flow plus citation flow replaces page rank. That's that's our metrics. Well, to, to I mean, the fact that that um, Google now have just mm. stopped even showing their page rank. Not that they've been updating it forever, but uh, you know, there are there are so many ways in which trust flow is a better metric than than page rank and citation flow as well. Even without the topical stuff, which we can talk about in a bit, but you know, the basic metric of trust flow for any anyone that's listening that that that, that doesn't know. Um, it's a score from zero to 100, just like page rank is a score from zero to 10. But firstly, that's one more degree of freedom. We got, you know, 100 mm -hmm. points on the scale instead of uh, instead of 10. But it also updates every more or less every day. Um, whereas, of course, page rank never updated yeah. um, towards the end. Uh, and uh, so it's more granular. Uh, it's also Trust flow is actually a stronger metric than page rank in the way that it's calculated because it's uh, it's got some some elements that are that are different to page rank. But for, uh, for instance, yeah. if you you if uh, if I recall when when the link is clicked, that's one of the the, the, the elements you you use. No, 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 no. no. We do, we, no we don't do any uh, we don't do any traffic tracking. We're, this is all about uh, influence, not about traffic. Um, but the, the the thing is. Our citation flow, if we, if we just looked at our own maths and we looked at the page rank algorithm maths, although the algorithms are different, the principles are similar, mm. citation flow should correspond or correlate 
reasonably closely to uh, to Google's PageRank. Exactly. So, uh, and way back in the day when I did some some check in, even before I uh, you know got got too far into it, I, I found a, a really high correlation, 0.83. I mm. took a I took a, a, a ten thousand websites, and I I uh, found the got the page rank for them. I, I don't know how did I get the page rank. I checked it with Moz data. I checked it with our data. I, you know, so uh, and, and we found a, a pretty high correlation. I don't know where I found a data of ten thousand page rank um, results, but I've got it from somewhere. Uh, and then I correlated our information, so we were pretty close. Um, but the thing is. Trust flow is stronger as a quality metric. It may not correlate so well to the original page rank algorithm, but it does have a connection. It uses a sort of vector algorithm to work out how close the links are to uh, places that we already know are trustworthy. So, uh, so, so it's um, it's actually a better signal of trust mm. than station flow. But then having the two together is really powerful as well. Uh, and, you know. I, because it's one of the basics now in linked audits is, okay, do you have trust flow above 30, 40? And is citation flow and trust flow kind of uh, equals? Or if you have yeah, double yeah. Uh, citation flow and trust flow, it's uh, it's bad for your link profile. And it's so an interesting it's thing, isn't it? Because you know, different SEOs can then interpret the data a different way. It's quite simple to see the data, but then interpreting it, I think, still experience counts and uh, but but the, the the key for you and i remember your your talk uh, it was about twitter and you were asking question you were who is more influent obama or lady gaga <laughs> yeah and that was it's a tricky question slide. i still use that today the, i should probably go on to you know <laughs> trump and obama but there's every chance that trump might win so i can't do that one yet <laughs> <laughs> no, but Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga and Obama was a, was a tricky question because most of the people answered Lady Gaga because she has more followers yeah. on Twitter, but yeah. it's not yeah. influence. Yeah, but yeah, but ultimately she 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 doesn't have the influence that uh, that Obama has. But then the the then the next slide on from that, which I'm sure you remember, was we then laid over the topical information, and it mm. and it really it really highlights that influence only works in context you know uh you can you can be you know uh, the most powerful man in the world but you still can't influence you know what download track somebody's going to buy on itunes you know exactly, exactly. It's, it, it, and i think that's that's where page rank as a concept really fell down um and I think that Google knew that years ago, and I think they did start categorizing and topic creating more topical page rank it, the stuff than, than, than the page rank we kind of knew as the old hat, old guard SEOs. Um, but then, you know, but no one else could do it. So, you know, there weren't uh, there, there wasn't that. I, I find that SEOs tend to jump on whatever information they can get instead of really going back to understanding you know if you were google collecting all this information or um you know how would you then interpret it um uh, and so uh, well, and it's, cause, yeah. it's what i tell people is try to ask the right questions before trying to find the good answer the, you know the already answers meaning yeah. the question is simple complex to resolve but simple there's a, a machine trying to set to please a human a robot, Google, yep. trying to please a web user. We SEOs have to figure out how a machine could want to please this, this human, you know, basically, yep. How, yep. how a machine w would do it. And um, I, think, uh, I think we're getting closer now with all the semantics, with the topical trust flow and, and so on. We're getting closer to this ideal website for Google what, what does he want as far as signals uh, that's kind of known today huh? it's, it's not uh... I, I, and I think uh, one of the things that we forget as SEOs uh, is that Google likes signals that were generated by human behavior yeah um, like links um, and like reviews uh, you know those those kind of things they do like them. They just don't like the fact that as soon as SEOs know about them, we kill the hell out of them. So, <laughs> yeah, for, for 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 people who don't know, you are an SEO. You were one of the top contributors in Webmaster World. You you had an agency. I thought I think you sold it. 
Yeah, well, I, I still have a okay. shareholding, but I, I'm not a director anymore. And it's doing very well, actually. So, yeah, they seem to yeah. be better without me. <laughs> You're not just the founder of, uh, of Majestic. You are a real SEO. <laughs> For sure. I started in, uh, I set up a limited company, a very early SEO company in 1999, which still goes to this day, called Receptional. Uh, and, uh, you know, really at that time, you know, Google was, was not on my radar. The big players were Lycos. Uh, Yahoo or into me, which was feeding like uh, Yahoo, um, you know, uh, Alta Vista was big there as well. InfoSeek, you know, and, and so there were so many uh, search engines trying to play that game. And the way they were monetizing things was crazy because there was an advert at the top. You, you type in credit cards and there was an advert at the top for Nike shoes, you know, no relevance whatsoever. More importantly, the result at the top there Hmm. was going to get a much higher click through than the than the Nike shoes advert of course but you know it just became obvious to me that that was maths uh and uh my degree way back in the day you told me how old I was uh is <laughs> I'm old too <laughs> it was in uh, maths and management studies and my, my maths wasn't quite good enough uh i was better at marketing than maths uh as but it was just good enough for, to me to understand correlations and start figuring out some of this stuff and i think now it's just uh experience that keeps me going but yeah then um uh, we did very well um as a seo company i think uh, uh pretty much as you say i was a moderator on webmaster world for a, for a lot i still am technically i don't get there very much uh but uh, uh And then when, when we started working with Majestic, um, yeah, by the time we left there, but by the time we changed Majestic's brand, we were uh, top three all over the world for mm. SEO, which was great. But we realized that we were not so much an SEO company as a, as a data company. True. So we, we, had to, we had to grow our brand. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, but let's go back to topical uh, trust yeah. flow because to me... The topic sensitive or topical page rank, uh, there, there is a bit of problem with translation in French because we, we call it the page rank thématique, which is topic sensitive yeah. page rank. And I think the right definition is topical page rank, not topic sensitive, because topic sensitive is thématique, which is more like a, like a cluster, you know, like demos, categories. Well, okay. well topicals, topical is what's interesting for the page what's the the real uh it's more than than lexical field it's it's more about semantic it's more about uh, you know it's less restrictive when you when you use the word topical than topic sensitive i don't know that's that's interesting actually because uh, maybe maybe that's a, a language problem that we can't get over because some parts of topical trust flow are looking at uh content page page mm. page topic uh But uh, but other parts of topic uh, of topical trust flow are really looking at you know how other web pages influence it. So so some of the stuff is outside in. In fact, most of the topical stuff is not saying um, that your content is about Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, it's it's more about the people that are referencing you and influencing your brand are about Star Wars because. Uh, I call that the, uh, I call that the smell. You know, it, it's more than the. <laughs> or, or, or see, see, the French understand these things so much better than the yeah. English. Uh, it, it's it's like a fo yeah a footprint or more more like smell. You know, it's something. There's the smell of the keyword. There's the keyword to intent. There's, but yeah. around around the. Uh, around an entity there is uh, there is the surrounding which is you remember that drinking game when you put a card on your forehead with a word yeah. right yeah. And, yeah. and when people try make you guess that word they yeah. they use more than just the lexical terms synonyms and all they use a whole range of of elements to make yeah. you guess they <laughs> they wave hands <laughs> yeah, they use hands true. they draw they, you know what I mean so so I think it yeah. goes beyond the keyword the keyword in itself is uh, uh, it's, a, it's interesting but yeah. okay anyway just to tell you a secret is that the topical uh, page rank is my main strategy uh, on the concept to organize a website it's uh, some kind of semantic siloing if you want to or topical yeah. siloing you know but it's basically what you do off-site i do it on-site because i think it's the same 
and, yeah. and if you if you if you don't have the the right silos with the good semantic affinity and and so on it doesn't work as well as um but yeah. for once the french are way ahead and 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 i just saw rand uh, rand fishkin's uh, whiteboard friday and I saw his tool in uh, Most Pro. So they're getting there a little bit topical related keywords, blah, blah. But for once, we're ahead. But we, you'll know more about that when I'll, I'll try to explain it to, to I've, I've not seen that whiteboard Friday. I, I, mean, I remember back in the day, we certainly talked about um, keywords in a different way to what to, 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 to what have, have recently because we did have of course all the google you know before google not provided google used to provide all the keyword rich information much much stronger than it does now um and there were some pretty powerful tools off the back of that that would help us um group keywords i i i've, I've got i remember slides from our receptional days of talking about grouping keywords into concepts uh, and not having one slide for one well, one page for one keyword but having a, a hub of authority within your site that's all about you know toulouse or whatever it may be uh because uh, because if you if you don't you don't create enough uh, enough influence mm. for one page to rank exactly uh, and i think it's uh, it's important to to to, to to be an expert, you can be an expert in, in several things. It becomes harder. You know, eBay sells all sorts of things. And I think one of the challenges for, for eBay is that uh, they've got so many items that they sell that you can't, it's hard to be an expert on any one of them. They're just, they're just a seller or an auctioneer. Uh, but if you're, uh, if you're British Airways or, you know, or Air France, then maybe you can be an expert on any, every venue that you, every, every city that you fly to and then ignore the rest of the cities in the world. Sure. So you can start to do that sort of thing. Well, all that, it's, it's fundamental. It goes back. But my point of view is we didn't have to, we didn't have to care about all this stuff because it was so easy to rank. It was so easy to spam Google. So <laughs> why, why do the job the hard way if <laughs> it works doing it, you know, half ass? <laughs> but, I but think now that it's might, getting tougher. That might be where uh, Britain and America are way ahead of the French. Then, <laughs> yeah. <we're, we're laughs> I think the, uh, the short answer to that is marketing. You know, I think no, uh, the French, you always try to cheat. We always try to find those shortcuts. You guys are more straightforward and, <laughs> and honest. Uh, yeah. Well, I think, I think, uh, oh. I don't, don't get me wrong. We've got plenty of black hats in our world as True. well. <laughs> many, many, many. Uh, and, uh, I'm not talking uh, even uh, about black hats, right? <laughs> it's, no. it's about everybody wants to cheat. Yeah, okay. You don't even need to be a black hat. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. But what I like about that, I mean, for, for, for Majestic, that's been great because people use trust flow as a currency for buying and selling you know domains all over the all over the world um and it's not what i intended not what we intended but uh i guess we knew that that was a pretty obvious use of our data um and we probably should have made it harder to figure out what your trust flow was without paying us money but anyway uh <laughs> you know it's it's good that it's good that it's uh it's become a, a ubiquitous uh a way of understanding the value of a, a website or a web page as well in a couple of seconds, you we're gonna you're gonna tell us the big surprise. I don't even know about it. You didn't tell nope. me before the show, so I'm nope. gonna be the first one uh, surprised and happy about it. But, <laughs> you're gonna say, "What's that gonna do with anything?" <laughs> but, but I wanted to ask you a question um, because it has always intrigued me how you deal between the B two C market and the B two B market. Meaning, yeah. you sell direct. To SEOs yeah. who want to use the the solution, but you also sell to companies who buy your your who they rent your API. It's a lot of money, yeah. And um, it's to me, it's uh, it's it's huge being able to be successful in both because it's yeah. totally different world, totally different uh, approach. Well, uh, we what we do is, I mean, I think there's we're strong we're strong at. At both ends of the market but not in the middle so uh so i think we're really strong you know for casual users we charge uh, 40 euros well we have a freemium model anyway so uh, so you can get data for free but you know it's it's only 40 euros a month it's not you know out of this world uh we do have other things that go up to around about 
250 pounds, uh, 400 euros, I think, uh, 350 euros, something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, where, where the API cuts in. Um, but, but for most, you know, if you're looking, using it yourself, then for most people, that, that, that amount is fine. And it's still B2B because consumers don't use Majestic. We don't, we're, we're all B2B. Uh, the difference is, are we going to the end customer or are we feeding our data through, uh, through a LinkedIn or a Bright Edge or an Analytics SEO or something like that? Uh, and, uh, and, um, and so I think our model at the, uh, down at the bottom is great. We're a fraction of the price of, uh, of uh, Ahrefs or Moz, for that matter, uh, and, and yet our data is really, really, really good, and we've concentrated on the data. Uh, and if we've got one criticism that the world fights at us, it says, you know, yeah, but it doesn't look as pretty as the other guys, you know, uh, and, and that's okay. Uh, it's not okay, really. We've got to get that better, but uh, but. Our first and foremost objective is to is to get this data. Uh, so then, what we don't do very well at the moment, and we're going we're fixing, is this, that middle agency ground where you've got mm. maybe ten users that are using it. They don't want they don't want the, just a data feed. They do want to use it, but they want to use it as a company. Um, and we we got to fix the multi seat system. We got to give maybe a few more bills and whistles to allow them to PDF files with their logos. Those those kind of things would be great. But then at the, the top end, the real thing is you're not allowed on any of those licenses to resell our data. I mean, you can, you can print off reports and give them to clients and stuff like that, but you can't build a software as a service and say, you know, here's all the, the, uh, the Majestic data integrated in there. Uh, so we have two, way, two or three ways of dealing with the data guys, you know. Uh, and uh, the first one we... we uh, we allow one command to be uh, used within within the platinum account. So at, at four hundred dollars a month, uh, four hundred dollars, yeah, three hundred euros, whatever it is. See, um, it shows you don't travel anymore. You don't. You don't even know the conversion <laughs> of <laughs> euros. <laughs> I, I tell you what, the conversion rate. I mean, the, the exchange rates have changed so much. I know all the other ones. You know, I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, okay, it's my bad. I'm just going to talk in dollars now, for exactly. a Exactly. <laughs> even though we, we we mostly use pounds, but uh, yeah. So so we do allow people to look up the trust flow and citation flow metrics for any URL and stuff, but we don't allow them to give people the backlinks. Our, our, our core business is the backlinks that provide all that information that give us the, the insight. Uh, and if you start doing that in a third party product, um, then a couple of things are going to happen. The first is we're going to cut off your API because you're breaking the terms of service. The second is even if we don't, you'll run out of data because if you, if your product's any good, um, then you're going to need more data than, than you can get in a platinum account. Uh, and, uh, thirdly we'll send the lawyers down. So, you know, uh, so, so basically some people do abuse that, but you can't get a business too large that way. You've really got to discuss, do you want to resell Majestic's mm. data? And that's a, that's a completely different conversation. We'll help people get, up to the level to do that uh, and there's a huge advantage for them to be able to do that because they can add value layers huge amounts of value layers because the one thing that majestic has done is we don't do rank checking we don't do um, you know uh, looking up uh, other data twi twitter apis and and, and feed in other bits of data majestic can guarantee say guarantee within a certain service level to these guys that we can give data that we've created that we're not breaking anybody's terms yeah. of service. We don't scrape Google. I don't think we must be the only major SEO tool that doesn't scrape Google. True. Um, and to do that, you have to be pretty good at crawling the rest of the web. Right. Uh, but it means that you know anybody that wants to buy the data, uh, they know that we're unlikely to get uh, to have it taken away from them. They've signed a contract. We signed a contract. You know, if our if our API stops, it's it's not because. Twitter stopped providing the data or Google decided to stop providing not provided data or whatever. Uh, and I think that's uh, fundamental to our business model. It means we control our destiny. Uh, and it means that these guys, you know, can build products that add a huge value layer on top of our data. True. Uh, so, so yes, it costs a lot more to do, uh, but we support these guys really well. Uh, they, you know, if 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 you have a web account and, and it stops working, 
Okay. Uh, we 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 might apologise, but uh, but if uh, if uh, these guys um, the the API stops working, that stops their product working, True. it starts. We we have to pay back. We pay them pay them that. that you know, the, every day that we're we're out, we've got to pay them back money, and you know, uh, and then they also have a higher level of support as well. So they they get to see a little bit of our roadmap and get to uh, to you know put in views. Uh, I, uh, to be honest, so so does every customer. If you if you go onto the website and you're logged in, there's a little feedback button. That feedback button sends a form straight into our roadmap system. Uh, so we have a uh, so so our roadmap system. Then, uh, if we've got things internally, that goes into the same system. So very quickly, all of those ideas are centralised, and we do do something mm. with them. So if somebody says, "I don't like that." Then, then tell us about it. But it really helps if they tell us w- what to do re- better. But the but the the guys that are paying us all this money, then uh, it will will um, advertise them if they want to on on our partnership page. We'll uh, you know sponsor their conferences. We'll we'll go down and bow down to them as best we can. But the most fundamental thing is they've got a license to resell our data, and you know anybody that goes to the web interface doesn't have a, doesn't have a license to mm. resell. No, I mean, you have definitely some great tools uh, using Majestic. Uh, personally, uh, SEO Observer, Cognitive SEO. Uh, yeah. What else I use? Um, I, Analytics SEO. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have yeah. those you got, amazing yeah, tools. I mean, there's others. There's, you know, Link Research Tools. There's Bright Edge. There's yeah. LinkedIn. Link uh, there's, there's a few new ones coming out as well. So, um, I think Optimizely uh, and uh, so, some other some other guys uh, are coming out with, with new ones. Uh, so, we'll see where they go with those. Uh, and then I think, hopefully, some more stuff will come out that, eventually uses the topical information a lot more which is kind of a new generation of stuff uh and, and hopefully it'll be either our guys that are already using our stuff or, or uh, and, and and some what i love is some people do it better than you for example the topical trust flow the re- yeah. i don't know if you saw the representation in so the visualization in so so observer the the kevin uh, richard's tools all right. It's it's very pretty. It's much prettier than than yours with just the the colored uh, numbers <laughs> next so to Kevin's. Ke- yeah, I mean Kevin has done a brilliant job because you know that's really mostly him. I think you know I don't know how big his company is now, but you know no, that's he just, just him <laughs> to jump into the uh, the reseller license. You know we 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 sat in a cafe in Paris years ago, and you know it, it, he's kind of like he put his. He put his heart and soul in the line to, to do that, True. and uh, and so did Razvan from Cognitive SEO, by the way. Uh, but it, you know, I think uh, you know SEO Observer. He really understands the data, and he's really looked at the other other options out there. And yeah, he can take it to the next level. So great! I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you're giving him a bit of kudos because I think he probably deserves it. He's worked hard. Should we tell them now? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you're not allowed to put this out until uh, in, until uh, it's gonna be. It's it, today is Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Fact, last night, in the early hours of the morning at four a.m. Uh, your time. No, probably two a.m. Your, your time. Uh, a a rocket took off from Cape Canaveral last night. I'm down. I'm now saying last night. And uh, on that rocket uh, is a three D printer. And that 3D printer is going to go up to the International Space Station. And we're going to be the first UK company anyway, but we're going to be the, we're we're going to, we're going to print a 3D model of the internet in space. So we're printing the internet from space (laughs) and uh, we're doing it to try and, you know, we think there's a huge affinity between space and the internet. Uh, You know, we've got our, 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 ambassador in italy he used to work with the european space agency back in the day you know but the the whole idea of the internet is a a frontier huge frontier as yet pretty much undiscovered at least as individuals we've only discovered each individual bit uh, a tiny bit you know space the same sort of thing it's there it's massive it's you know almost infinite uh and there's quite a lot of similarities in the in the sort of the mathematical bits of you know planets revolving around stars and stars revolving around galaxies and stuff yeah. And then this sort of thing with, with uh, flow metrics as well. So anyway, so uh, a company called Made in Space 
uh, have partnered up with NASA uh, to to send a to send a three D printer up to space. It's insane. Uh, that kind of needs funding. So uh, <laughs> so um, you know, it's a commercial relationship that we've got with with Made in Space to 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 go up there uh, and build this uh, and um, and print this off. And so we have we're going to have a spaceman. Print it off really? it's there from space. Do, uh, do, do you go for the 30 million bucks uh, Google is offering? You know, the lunar project or something? Uh, hold on, let me find you the. Okay. Because you can even make money. Hold on. <laughs> Google can. <laughs> well, we haven't spent 30 million bucks, so if we can get the money back, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, if you Google up, uh, no, uh, we're on Skype. I can give you the. <laughs> okay. I can give you the link, but you can even. I'll post the link on the on the blog post. Uh, okay. Let's go and have a look. But you can. Uh, there is a grand prize of thirty million dollars, I think. <laughs> For doing what? I don't know. 20, 20 million grand prize, second place, 5 million. Yeah, I might have to land on the moon to do that. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, it's, a, it's a first step. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a, it's you know. a challenge entrepreneurs and innovators from all around the world to develop low cost methods of robotic space exploration. Okay. Well, uh, we're kind of in the game. You know, yeah, uh, you can try. Uh, I mean, it's worth the shot, sure. you know, <laughs> fill out the form. <laughs> 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 I, yeah, might do. Uh, I, I think first. I mean, we're we 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 just we're glad to be part of the part of the space thing, and we certainly you know want to demonstrate that Majestic is a whole lot more than just an SEO tool, and our brand hopefully is going to go to the next kind of level with that. Um, but yeah, maybe we should, we should we should go and do that. <laughs> Check I, out. I, the I, I love the idea. It's it's definitely uh, the the repre representation of, of of the web is definitely uh, similar to to the, the idea we have of of space, and yeah. the symbol of of building a, a representation of the internet in space is is uh, oh, I love I love it I love it. So because uh, because I don't know if you ever saw uh, about last year we we started doing three D profiles of websites. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and so, uh, you can, you can, you can see, see what they are. Uh, actually we kind of, uh, let me just, uh, I'll grab a link as well. Um, if I can get there, hold on, uh, of, uh, of our majestic landscapes, uh, put it into the, uh, majestic landscapes. Uh, Actually, this guy um, made them. Actually, he's a data artist. Uh, I'll send you over his his links because he uh, he did did, did uh, a, a few I'm, different. I'm, while you talk, I'm trying to think about the title of my blog post. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be pretty funky, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, so this guy's a data artist, and he's done work for uh, E, uh, the phone company. He's done work for uh, um, lots of other really big brand names, and and he turns data into art uh, and it's 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 really good because you know this idea came out of turning turning a, one of our things into into a 3d life cycle because every website is different you know print out a different website and it's a slightly different uh, chart most of them look the same sort of thing but it's slightly different but also they're different in time you do it three weeks later and of course you've mm -hmm. got more links and, and so there's a slight difference in the chart Anyway, what we did was we wrapped up the same methodology for the whole internet for uh, all, every, you know, for all 200 million websites, whatever the number of websites there are, you know, we've got all that information and put it into one file and it's going to print off a, a big mountain, really. So, uh, 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 and I've, then we're going to, yep. I've seen, yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen 3D models uh, of, of uh, similar to, to the physical ones you just showed me. But oh, good. look, look yeah. at what the French are doing right now. I told you about this uh, on-site topical trust flow, basically. Yep. And uh, someone came out with a crawler, which makes... You've never seen something like that. You know, it's a, it's a crawler view of the website, but... Oh, very cool. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty uh, funky. Oh, pretty huh? cool. Yeah. Uh, so we got... Uh, We've got some stuff that we came out with. I just just put this link out. If, if anybody wants to see what we're doing with the uh, with the big announcement and the space stuff, uh, it should be up there on that URL. That's kind of the, the we, we're gonna we're gonna put that as a kind of a living 
a living page up there where we're going to talk about because we're going to do a whole lot of other things around space as well and or, and also around this kind of visualizations and stuff like that link that you just put there as well uh because uh, we've um we've doing been doing a huge number of things on uh on visualizations here's another one that's uh that's kind of good uh which i'm sure we'll blog about as part of that kind of stuff here which is uh the majestic universe which uh if you let this one run uh, it starts gathering all of the uh the websites on the internet and lets them all start collating into a uh uh, a, a mass of, uh, of of big websites, so so the biggest websites start going to the center of the universe and stuff, and then the smaller I didn't ones. Out. See that one coming? The other one uh, I we, saw. But the, are you sure? Because you, you, I'm supposed to be in your super VIP mailing list, knowing everything about Majestic before, but I don't remember this one. Yeah, Maybe I don't I think we've it. actually talked about it yet. I mean, yeah. we we, did, we it has been up on the web. It has been uh, labs.majestic.com has been up on the web uh, a while, and I've definitely sent you on the secret mailing list when that came out <laughs> uh but uh, but we were we, although when we um when we uh, put put it out we uh we did it one step at a time actually so we did the social profiles but we've got a bunch of other things that we haven't yet talked about uh on the internet and, and haven't brought out but this one you know we kind of obviously this this going to space thing has uh has been years in the planet mm -hmm. you know you don't yeah. just take a, a rocket off to play to space True. Uh, and so, uh, so when these guys made, uh, when our guys, you know, made this uh, in the summer, uh, we kind of thought, well, it, it might be good to sort of release that around about the same time as the uh, as the space launch and stuff. So that'll probably come out as a blog post in in, in English at least in the next uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, and uh, uh, but of course, the French now have it first. Well, so well, you could... obviously, of course, before sending a man to space with a printer, you figure out. <laughs> <laughs> what it would look like. <laughs> I, I think it's fair to say we haven't actually got a man in there. It's all right. It's an unmanned rocket that's going up. <laughs> so, uh, well, no, actually, what it's going to look like is, yeah, what it's going to look like is on is on that uh, that ma that short URL, the match, uh, dot to URL, oh. or will be uh, by the time you guys get up there. Because um, okay. we'll probably show what it's supposed to look like. Of course, there's no guarantee that, A, the rocket's going to have taken off, so this is going to be a really bad interview if the, if the rocket didn't take off last night. Uh, and then it's still got to get up there. The printing's got to work. I mean, printing a 3D object without gravity is uh, is a pretty pretty hard thing to do, I think. So, uh, yeah. you know, so they, so they did take up a, a prototype uh, 3D printer uh, last year to just see if they could do things, but this is the first time anything's coming up where wow. actual stuff gets printed out there. So yeah, so well, that's what, what, that's the big thing, you know. We're kind of going to, you know, and it's a good chance for us to talk about space uh, as a topic uh, for for a while on the on, on the internet because people keep on looking at majestic data with with verticals just for SEO, um, but space is a as yet, not commercialized, really, you know, back from mm. space tourism and stuff. So we can use it to uh, bring out the idea of analyzing verticals and using topical stuff for analyzing verticals. So I'm sure we'll have blog posts for about For sure, this. it's, it's going to help you come out of the, the SEO niche. And, Hopefully. and everybody is going to talk about you. Uh, I mean, it's like a, it's a Red Bull strategy. Don't talk about the product. Talk about something else. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Although... Yes. Yeah, I guess it is a Red Bull strategy, although I'm not going to jump out of uh, a balloon in space. That's just not going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> they can have that one. They can have that record. <laughs> we'll get different records. Well, I'm definitely... Uh, I, I don't even have any words to describe what I'm seeing because... <laughs> I, I had uh, I had no clue you were were that far out in in uh, in um, in the strategy, uh, but it's there. Yeah, nice it's, call, great. I uh, know. Well, uh, yeah, it's good. It, it's know. definitely not the cheapest way <laughs> to, to, to get some. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you want to stand out now, and we, maybe we can go back to you. We were talking just before we went online about uh, how I think um, the the British are probably better at marketing. Mm. You know, uh, in, in in many ways. Uh, and I think it becomes hard to stand out. You can't just write another piece of content. You've got to, you know, you've got to do something to stand out. Uh, hopefully, this stands out, you know. Yeah. And, and you, you, you say it's not the cheapest way. Of course, it's not the cheapest way. And the amount of effort we've got to put into to getting digital assets to to, to back it all up uh, is quite a lot. But um, but it it's better than sponsoring, you know, 
just sponsoring a, a football team, although we do sponsor a female football team in uh, locally as well. But uh, you know, it's, I think it's a it's a good way to take our idea to the next level and uh, and stand out. Uh, but but it hasn't gone too far away. I hope from the tree of uh, you know we're all about data. No, about- it's that's what I, I found amazing. It's definitely the symbol link is there. The coalition, yeah. the, the the link between what you're doing in space and what Majestic is all about is definitely there. It's yeah. it's not random. Yeah. It's 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 less random than than a, a football team. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. So uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, it'll inspire a few people to have a look a bit closer at what Majestic's doing. Hopefully it'll take us, uh, as you say, out of the you know SEO tool to this is a a major well an interesting player on the, on a world stage or an out of this world stage now so uh, mm-hmm. you know and if nothing else we can say we were the first guys to print print the print the internet from space you know so wow. it'd be great <laughs> amazing all right i'm going to have to because uh, i'm scared already with 40 and so minutes of subtitles i have to do now oh, <laughs> before no. wednesday <laughs> Uh, you know, Mechanical Turk. I oh, know they probably can't. Yeah, translate. no, there's there's rev. Uh, no, but I've, I've uh, I have a way of doing it. Meaning, okay. I, I I talk in the mic. Uh, I, I I record my voice translating what you say, and somebody is doing the the transcript. But okay. it's quicker that way. So I just have forty and so minutes of work, not not hours. But what you say is get off now, <laughs> go and do something else because I can't record anymore. <laughs> but yeah, the, the last uh, quick question that was was because I forgot to ask you, but this it's very interesting to me the difference between the the French SEO market with this kind of mm-hmm. we don't know how it works. It works. It's not organized. Everybody is doing it things on their ass and 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 marketing wise when I see the Americans, especially and and more or less the the, the, the British, you, I mean, you're just so sharp. Everything you never forget anything in the process. Uh, uh, when you launch something, everything. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I I wish that that was true. Firstly, uh, I mean, I I think that um, I think that we're quite good. At uh, with the Americans particularly are, are good at creating a brand, uh, and I think that that if you try and take shortcuts, you don't create a brand that way, and certainly not a good brand that's going to last the test of time. Uh, and and a brand is created really uh, uh, um, by understanding uh, where you're different and where you're unique, and and, and then exploiting that. Uh, I'm actually. Uh, Sideways on, I'm doing an MBA, um, and uh, uh, which is kind of like you know ab- above a degree. Uh, and my uh, my marketing uh, lecturer, she's she's very French, uh, and uh, uh, she's uh, written some, some really good books. So uh, 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 Brigitte uh, Nicolo, if you ever want to track down a, a French lady that really understands marketing, she's brilliant at it. But she's really uh, helped uh, helped her, uh, me at least to see. That I was doing okay on marketing, but there's so much more I can do to better understand my strengths, weaknesses. You know, SWOT analysis is fairly basic, but you know, you get it right, uh, and you can really exploit your strengths, your weak. You, you can you can defend your weaknesses against your weaknesses. You know, and then uh, and then you know how you go from one product. A one product company, a one trick pony into a to a, uh, a either a you know a one trick pony with a much bigger market or a, a or a multiple trick pony. If you go, don't go in the right direction, it's not going to work. You yeah, can't. but more than that, you have the steps. It's like they tell you step one, you do this. Step two, we just do it. <laughs> yeah, make some steps. If you break the steps, okay. But if you don't make the well, steps, it doesn't explain. work as well. If you follow the the steps, usually yeah. it works much better than just. Uh, <laughs> and if you make steps, you can you can train other people to do it as well. So you exactly. make the steps and say, look, this has worked for me. I do this, 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 and this. And then, okay, the first time they just copy it and just do it. But then the second time they make it better or realize that I didn't explain it right or whatever. And then hopefully next time it gets better and better. I say me, I don't think I'm a, you know, we're a very small brand, really. Uh, although, you know, we are going to space. So, you know, you're, not, you're not a small brand. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but we're no 
on Google. It's it's, uh, it's SEO. That's another thing. Over there in, in, in England, you did something that the French weren't able to do is take SEO ser- seriously and make clients take it seriously. Meaning yeah. you brought it to a level where the budget are there, the budget are there people are listening, people are doing it. Other, I mean, sometimes, you know, the difference between position one and two is in millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and sure. it doesn't translate in the way the clients in France perceive it. They, it's, uh, it's more on point in England than over in the US where you made the client realize really what the end game was and how much they need to spend and how to spend it. Yeah, I, gu- I guess we have the advantage of being able to take any content that was, you know, any analysis that was already in English and just give it and put it in front of the client and say, look at this, you yeah. know, we don't to translate it. Um, uh, I remember early days, a guy that did that really well was a guy called Bill Hunt, he, uh, uh, Bill Hunt and he's still still um, very influential today, uh, and his organization uh, at the time, uh, he, he and he's written really good books on SEO as well, but he, he had this thing called a, an opportunity matrix, I think it was called, where he looked at, he, you know, he, he took, took data about the predicted click-through rates based on, uh, based on you know, positions 1 to 10 or 1 to 20, uh, and then uh, took, you could, took the customer's data of where they were ranking, and then he just mounted up the value of all the stuff they're not doing. If they were number one on all their terms, you'd make this much money, we'll have this much traffic, you know, and you haven't. So basically now, which ones do you want to fill in? Mm-hmm. And uh, that brought the numbers up to uh, to directors to a level that says, this is a big, big problem, a big, big yeah. challenge, and, and we're worth, and worth uh, tackling. Um, I think against that, though, you know, in the early days, there were lots of search engines. Now there's one, but against that, we can now optimize on Facebook. We can now optimize in app stores. Well, we, can, we, have, there's well, all the other well, things that we have a French f- f- search engine. It's going to take over the world. It's going to beat Google. <laughs> yes. oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you know. Well, the yes. objective is 5%. Five, 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 five five they, they want 5% of market share. That's... Okay. That's... Doable, I think. Doable. Yeah, okay. Good luck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's still a lot. <laughs> that's still a lot. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But they're, they're well, we'll have a good search API for them if they, they, if they can't do it themselves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got a, a new French, uh, you know, uh, a quant-like search engine, which uh, quant is about respecting uh, private privacy. And, and there's, uh, there's one that came out in England, I think, no? Well, no, there's US, the US has DuckDuckGo now. Yeah, uh, but there's a, there's a British one, I think, a new one coming out or just came out. I know Quant told me about it, so... Okay. But they're there's, coming to England. There's a, there's a few different things. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want to give too much about that. I'll let me deal with the space thing first, and we'll yeah. figure out what we do in the next few years with First ourselves. Because we've got, you know, when you look at the web crawlers on the internet, we're in the top, maybe top five, certainly top ten web crawlers. You know, there's Google, then there's Microsoft, and then, you know, we're in the kind of Yandex, Baidu kind of crowd on the crawl uh, volume. Uh, so we've got the data, and we and, and you know, that gives us a huge advantage for you know for the future. Whether it's us that takes it to the next level or somebody that uses our data to take it to the next level, I think we have a really important part of the uh, the puzzle for building the next generation of search engines because uh, because we know how influential every page is on the internet mm-hmm. and in what context because of the topics. We don't have all the on-page stuff, but we've made the problem much, much smaller. And if you're doing search, I've got a presentation I do that is all about the needle in the haystack analogy. Uh, and everything we look for is, uh, is a needle in the haystack uh, in, in, in life and in search. You don't search everything. You just search a little bit of stuff very quickly. So you go to a library. Uh, you don't go to book number one to find the mass of the moon. You go to the astrology section and start there. So very quickly we narrow it down, and, and search is all about that as well. Uh, and you can't do that easily unless you've first got an overall idea of everything on the Internet so that you know what you've got to look at more closely. Okay, to end up, last question. How do you, as an old-school SEO, you're not old, but you're old-school SEO. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. I'm 52. It's old. I'm 47. It's uh, you're old too. Very old. Well, very old. But you're catching, you're catching me. Okay. What do you think uh, of the of the future? The, this whole the, the Google 
desktop-like version, right? The, the, the Google we know is kind of uh, amid single left. Uh, now it's uh, machine learning uh, rolling the thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of not frozen, but the the if you if you compare to Google now, the the, the app to to predictive search and so on. Um, where do you see where do you see this whole thing going? Uh, uh, from, from well, I think it's a couple know. of different things. Uh, I think, firstly, so I could talk about you know uh, localization and uh, and uh, and uh, predictive text and uh, search and stuff like that. But I think further, further and above that, or deeper, uh, there's a, there's a few things that are really important uh, that I don't think I don't see SEOs talking about. The first is the idea of entity search uh, and the way that. Uh, Google has has some research documents out there, which I think are very interesting, but a really long read. But for me, they were worth it, uh, where I would suddenly realized that it was not about the website anymore. It was more about the entity that the website was talking about. And so Google, instead of storing loads of URLs, it's storing loads and loads of ideas, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, the Queen of England or, you know, uh, or, or, you know, Toulouse or, um, you know, or, or places or people, whatever it may be, these entities are now stored as a, an idea separately. And then all of the other signals that's that entity is mentioned on this website over here, or it appears with a video over there, or it's, uh, it's got an app that's associated with it over there, all those different entities, then uh, all those different mentions or citations or, or elements then come back to say, this entity is more influential than this one in this the, context. The value, yeah. So I think that that's a, a really different way to, to understand uh, uh, how the how the internet's evolving, uh, and uh, I think that that's that's just something that SEOs are not even considering. Really, we, we, and they no, be. We, we are talking about it at least to, with my friends, and uh, our point of view is very simple. Uh, the the blockchain would be amazing. Yeah. To, to give that value, you know, blockchain is exactly the concept we need to give the credit and be sure that credit is uh, is good, you know? Yeah. Do, do, so it's, it's explain blockchain. Well, blockchain is, um, it's a revolution. They should press reset <laughs> and, and redo <laughs> the internet with blockchain. But, uh, oh, how could I explain it even in English? But the, the it's basically, it's like peer-to-peer, Transaction, but meaning you you credit you 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 vouch for the transaction, you know. Okay, got so, it. Yeah. So okay. if yeah. you give value to something, yeah, there is hey, the, the credit gonna... is uh, you can't fake it. You can't you can't uh, for financial transaction, for example, yeah. blockchain yeah. will be a revolution. So when uh, when Tim Berners Lee first set up the internet and he uh, set up HTML, really hypertext uh, links as an idea, he really broke, uh, he broke a fundamental element of, uh, of programming mm. where you kind of, you, you, when you, if you're going to connect to something, you need to check that it's there before you kind of put it, put it out there. But he's put, you know, hyper to hyper tech links can link to anything and that thing can change. Uh, and there's, so there's no verification process in the original hyperlink, um, uh, protocol. So, you know, it sounds, sounds like, you know, that your 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 mates in the pub talking about that that kind of idea fixes that as an issue and it suddenly makes it much more obvious what's trustworthy it also though will make it easier to buy your way to the top true so the, the, when when you see uh, how much money cloud made just by doing like some kind of person rank uh, we don't know oh, oh, how, oh. how much money have they made uh, how, versus how much money have they they got invested. There's two different things. I'm pretty sure. sure no, no, that, uh, money. right. How much money they, they could raise, but just on bullshit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just on, uh, yeah, yeah. So if you get, if you really can crack the this value, this how how you how you put a, a value on something on an entity, I think. Yeah. I think you broke the code. <laughs> I think, well, I think we're way ahead of clout now. I yeah. think I've got a pretty but check good out, idea. Check out blockchain. You see, if you don't know about it, it's very interesting. No, I will. I will. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be done. 
But, uh, I, you know, I think my next step is, you know, I'll take on Clout. I think we've got a, something better than them. Uh, and uh, if, if Clout doesn't want to become a reseller of ours, then, frankly, uh, we'll go our own way. Yeah. Well, someone else will. <laughs> uh, true. But, um, I mean, Majestic, what else? It's one of our pillars. <laughs> There's a... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty scared about some, some tools I'm using, like Evernote, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Evernote is not good in financing. Uh, finances are too in trouble. But, but Majestic, I'm, I'm glad it's going well. I'm going to see you in Paris for the European Search Awards. Yep. I was very disappointed. Topical tr uh, as, a, as a judge, I fought very hard for the topical trust flow, but the other judges uh, routing for Lindex were... Uh, better than me <laughs> but i'm gonna get my revenge this year hopefully no that's fine that's fine we just we just won uh one on the u.s search yep. awards uh on that uh innovation and we won the uk in UK, the uk yep. innovation in the uk as well so uh that's that's okay and and hopefully we are uh we've got a few other things in the pipeline as well which i think will you know also be maybe not as big as going oh, to yeah. space and you Pretty can win all the time <laughs> no, no, you should win all the time you know you so I, I don't I, I don't mind i don't mind you know it keeps us on our toes <laughs> true true but, uh, okay so i'll see you in paris well, well thank you very much. yeah gonna be great right. thanks Dixon. bye bye